Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. everyone. I'm Miriam Knight, and I'm the host of your show. I'm the publisher of New Consciousness Review, and I'm so delighted to have with us today some of the rising stars of The Conscious Awakening. Our first guest is David Zarza. David is a noted psychic medium, intuitive counselor, life coach, and corporate consultant based in Seattle, Washington. With a background in psychology and a passion for spirituality, David is the perfect marriage of science and spirit. He has been featured on national television and has had a syndicated radio presence with a reach of millions through the radio talk show Get Sophisticated. It is a featured American psychic contributor. Um, David is a featured contributor to the Australian magazine Spirit Talk, and he runs a thriving psychic gym for those who wish to master their own psychic talents. David is the author of When Spirits Call, in which he shows you how to lift the veil, the illusion that prevents you from reconnecting with your departed loved ones. And he's currently writing his next book, Beauty in the Breakdown, a spirited guide for dealing with the major losses in life. Welcome, David. Welcome. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mario. I love being here. I'm so delighted to have you to to have you tear yourself away from your uh, favorite pastime of haunting happy hour in Seattle. <laughs> I do love that, but it doesn't start for another several hours. Oh, so I, have, okay. I have time. <laughs> okay, very good. So tell me, David, as a psychic medium, what are the top reasons that clients seek you out? Mm, you know, it's probably similar to other other psychics but specifically for me because one of my specialties is spirit communication um, mediumship mediumship is probably the top reason why clients come to me when they have questions about a loved one's passing or um, they want to know wh how they're doing now after they've passed um, that would be the top reason why clients come to see me the second reason would probably be i'm sorry go ahead no 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 go on Oh, the second reason would probably be relationship questions. You know, before somebody makes a big commitment, whether it's an engagement or a marriage, clients come to see me to see, you know, how energetically or spiritually compatible they are with their clients. Because I, I take a pretty scientific approach to that. So when you do readings, it's not necessarily connecting with someone who's passed. Not necessarily. No. Some clients even come to see me because they want to take a peek into their future, which is really exciting and fun. Do you use the same sort of energetic mechanisms to do both, the, the mediumship and the, the future peering? No, actually. And that's what I tell my clients. Uh, before, before they come see me, um, I like to know as little information as possible before our appointment. I basically only want to know the time they want to come in and their name. And that way, you know, I can just open up during the session as to whatever the universe wants to show me or whatever the spirit wishes to show me. But I do ask them if they would like a spirit communication type session or a psychic only type session, because it does require a different type of preparation. On your part. What's On the difference? My part. The difference is in the type of, I, I meditate before every single client session, but the difference is in the meditation type. With the, um, with the psychic type focus sessions, my meditation is mostly um, what I would call logistically focused or temporally focused or, um, or what I call lifeline focused. So, so that I take more of a detached empirical view towards my client and their life. And if it's a spirit communication session, that's more of an emotional type meditation. 
where I connect with my feelings, where I connect with my uh, my own sensitivities. Because when a when a spirit connects through me, I basically go off of that. You know, what is it that I feel as that spirit? Because in a way, we we merge or our ener- our energies intertwine for that time that we spend, you know, during the connection. That's a fascinating distinction. I remember seeing John Edwards on television, and he always refers to how he's feeling, and he sees certain images, and then through years of practice, he has connected those images with certain messages. It's like learning a language, it seems. Yes, that's one way of connecting, but I think I'm a little different. Um, Actually, I know I'm a little different, because... I, my experience when I do a spirit communication or when I do a mediumship session with a client is I get to re-experience a lot of that spirit's life. Specifically, you know, to, to validate that this is the spirit that this client wishes to connect to, I tap into how they passed, you know, and memories before and after they passed. Um, so in a way, I'm, I'm like more than a witness to their life. So it's like I share the experience of their life with them, which to me is partly a great honor. But at the other, like on the other side of it, it it still surprises me because it's it's so it's so moving and visceral. Wow, that yeah. sounds fascinating. Can you give us an example of some of the most uh, memorable sessions you've had? Oh my goodness! Well, actually, I just had a really amazing session with this, with this family. Um, this young woman contacted me just last week and she said, you know, uh, David, I think my family needs to meet with you. And right when she said you, the word you, I heard this voice of this young man couldn't have been more than 30 years old that said, I am her brother. You must meet with them. And I said, I, I told her, you know, is this, is this your brother that you want to connect to? And she said, yes. And, and I told her, well, he's already connecting with me. So we have to have the session. And so I, I, I was, my, my calendar was full the rest of the week, but I said, you know, he's really insistent. So, you know, I'll see you really late tomorrow. Um, and when we met, he immediately came through so clearly because he had so much information to share you know, it was, um, he passed by shooting, which he made me feel, you know, the, like the impact and the pain and where, where he was actually hit in the head, which was not painful, but it was alarming, mm. you know? Um, and then, and then he, he shared with me what he looked like before he passed, which I was able to describe, you know, features, physical features, weight, you know, hair, hairstyle, eye color, things like that. And so this family knew that I was speaking to, you know, their son, this young woman's brother. And through the session, he was able to share that he did not, you know, take his own life, that it was actually an accidental shooting, that he was just playing with this firearm, which is such a sad way of passing. But knowing that, validated that his family's feelings which they also felt like he would never take his own life and so so it was just it was just interesting having him share that before they even told me any backstory let me ask you someone like that Mm -hmm. um clearly he felt an urgent need to get this particular message through to the family so that they wouldn't feel guilty and and so on and so forth um does that tend to play a role when there's unfinished business that people come through more urgently, more clearly? Absolutely. At least from what I've noticed, um, the, the, the sessions that seem to be the richest, you know, the, the deepest and the most moving, um, for me as a psychic, but also for, for my clients as the participants there in the session with me, um, are the ones where there are tragic endings or very, or very violent passings because it's in those experiences where 
the family likely has no closure mm-hmm. or has or even the spirit themselves you know they they have had no no closure to their passing they they couldn't share their last loves you know their last loving words with their family or with their loved ones and so it's easy for me to tap into that energy um even without knowing you know this the spirit's name or or even what they look like because they show me they want to communicate this which which i love to do like i've gotten to the point where i love doing this um where before when i was much younger i i resisted it mhm so how is this um experience different from when you're reading somebody's future oh well when i'm reading somebody's future i stay as mostly me where i can be detached to this person's um life and possibilities of how their life will unfold when i'm in a spirit communication session when i'm actually interacting with a spirit i share their experience you know mm-hmm. i'm up close it's almost as if i'm able to see behind their eyes you know and through them whereas in a in a psychic session it's more like i am looking at this hologram of this person's life and all the many paths that they could likely take with the paths that they are most likely going to take being highlighted fascinating it really is it's it's you know i i tell i tell my friends my closest friends and family that this is it's got to be like the weirdest thing I have ever experienced, you know, being able to peek into a person's life to see, you know, moves that might happen, um children that they're supposed to have, relationships that they're that are meant to fail and others that are meant to succeed. Wow, I, David, uh, we have to take a break now, but we're speaking with David Zarza and we will be right back after these messages. You won't want to miss the rest. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Imagine receiving healing, vibration-raising energy as you listen to the radio. Energy that flows effortlessly to you. Imagine exploring all things metaphysical, sharing in an ongoing adventure. Join me, Karen Smoot, along with my co-hosts Lisa Victorson and Wendy Weber for Immersion into Source. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Om Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. I Om FM. We're speaking with David Zarza, author of When Spirits Call. David, this um psychic ability that you have When did you first notice it? Is it something that you actively went out to develop? Um 
as a child, I was always sensitive and I was always a good guesser um, or what I thought was a good guesser. And as I grew up, it just started getting clearer and clearer where if somebody were to say a person's name to me, I would start to envision that person. And I could even, you know, at that point, describe what they were wearing and where they were and who they were with. But it wasn't until I was 13, and I think I saw this this talk show, um, Montel Williams. I don't know if you know it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of his favorite guests... Was Sylvia Brown. Exactly. And I Mm -hmm. saw her, and and I saw... um, I liked how she connected with people. And I liked how she was able to share information that was important for them at, at that point in their life. And that's when I got the idea that, you know what, I would love to do something like that. Um, And so I lost track of her and I I started reading books and started taking classes and nothing seemed to resonate. So then I said, you know what, universe, if, if you want this to be for me, then make it easy for it to develop. And then little by little, I got guidance as to how to develop it and how to improve it, how to get clear and accurate. And now I do it as a profession. When you say you got guidance, was that from your own spirit team? It's who, it's what I call the universe. Mm-hmm. And to me, if somebody were to ask me, you know, do you have a spirit guide or do you have guides? Um, I'd have to say I, I I don't, or not that I know of, but I do have this force that communicates with me and through me that I refer to as the universe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you believe that these intuitive abilities uh, can be developed by Absolutely. anyone? Absolutely. Because I, I realized early on when I was practicing my own um, abilities and talents with them that this was actually not a paranormal or a supernatural gift or talent that it was actually an intellectual ability that you could nurture by number one, understanding yourself so well that, you know, when you're imagining something, when you're making something up or when you're remembering or recalling, Because once you know how you and your system, and by system, I mean your mind, your body, and your spirit, once you know how your system operates, then you know when information is coming to you and through you instead of of you. So is that uh, the kind of training that you offer in what you call psychic gym? Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Psychic gym has got to be one of the most... um, the most fun adventures that I have ever undertaken (laughs) (laughs) because psychic gym is exactly what it sounds like. You know, it's, it's a place where, where people can, where, you know, participants can safely and comfortably explore the sides, uh, the side of themselves. um, While I teach them concepts and tools and tips to, to hone those abilities because it's actually, well, from what I've seen, really simple for, you know, whoever is participating in my psychic gym. And here's just a quick note that I thought psychic gym would be attractive to people who are already in, you know, who already have metaphysical interests or are into the supernatural. But it's curious. And I don't know if it's just Seattle, but my participants are mostly professionals, you know, like doctors or psychotherapists or engineers or computer programmers, like the ones who feel there's something more to life that they want to explore, but aren't totally committed to, you know, like a, like a grander spirituality or a metaphysical perspective. So it's people who have both curiosity and an open mind. Absolutely. Mm. That, that is what will help you hone these intellectual abilities, which are psychic abilities. I have to ask, David, did you have any relatives who had psychic abilities? You know, I, in my growing up, the only one that I knew of was my mother. And it was mostly isolated to interactions between her and I, you know, like we would be able to pick up thoughts around each other. Um, 
But then when I started researching this and asking grandparents about, you know, the weirdness of my life, they they started sharing these stories. Actually, my mom's mom, so my maternal grandmother, she had a un- an uncle in Mexico who was known to speak with dead people. And, he, you know, mediumship wasn't a term back then. Um, and they had strict, you know, Catholic religious views. So they always saw his abilities as something not healthy, even though my grandmother herself was really fascinated by it. So, so I know that there was at least one medium in my ancestry. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> really? Yes. But what is interesting is that um, the people who are experiencing it in this lifetime, then go and look into their past. I'm wondering how many people, if they ask the same questions, even if they don't have any intuitive ability now, would find the same kind of background. But there definitely does seem to be a kind of familial propensity for... (laughs) Or maybe uh, a genetic component, you think? (laughs) Well, you know, it's all vibration. So, yeah. Anyway, um... So you uh, also do some kind of coaching, uh, I understand. I do. Um, I call it integrity coaching or intuitive coaching because it's it's a different sort of coaching than I have received in the past um, in the sense that I incorporate my own um, intuitive insights about this person's you know, lifeline, like I mentioned earlier, into the work that we do specifically, you know, so it's like coaching in the sense that we have a desired outcome, like maybe this person wishes to uh, switch careers into something that's more fulfilling and less soul sucking, or maybe they wish to find a greater love because their relationship past has been less than ideal, or maybe this person just wants to heal from a loss. And they, they seem to find, you know, no, no resolution. Um, it's coaching in the sense that we move them forward. But it's intuitive and integrity focused in the sense that um, I help them reconnect with what I call their greatest or their true self. And combining that, it's, it's been a really powerful experience for my clients. And I'm really excited because... Um, several of my clients have wanted to um, record videos of, you know, their experiences with me in coaching. And those will be up on my website soon. But I'm so thankful for them. While we're in the neighborhood, tell us what that website is. Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's uh, com. So it's just my name, David, dot com. Very good. Very good. And tell us about your book. Uh, which one? When Spirits Call? Well, whichever one you want to, <laughs> to, to mention. Yeah. Um, well, Spirits Call has got to be um, my, my labor of love. I actually wrote it for myself. It was, it was like a journal and a journey from me as a person who resisted being a psychic medium to someone who has fully accepted it and wanted to do more with it. Um, And in it, I actually went back to, you know, dozens and dozens of clients um, to find out what happened, you know, after our session and what transformed or what changed because I don't know what your experience is like, but when a client comes to see me, I often don't hear any more from them until I see them again next year because they want, they want more, more insights into their life. Um, so I decided to just go back myself and ask them, you know, what was your experience in session like with me? You know, what happened and how did it go after, after you left? And so those kind of stories are in that book. Um, Very good. Which is awesome. And uh, in in the one or two minutes we have left, um, 
Can you give our readers any, uh, listeners, any recommendations for, um, for life, for living? Wow. Yes. And <laughs> without, without the ability to get really personal into their life, like without me having the ability to look into their individual lives, um, these might sound really cliche, but honestly, listen to your heart. And I'm not kidding about that. It's, we've built a society where we listen to our brain more, you know, our, our logic and our analytical selves. But the magic happens when you listen to that intuitive part of you, that part of you that reacts emotionally, that feels feelings, that connects with others, you know, through that visceral knowing of oneness. Um, so listen to their heart for sure. The second is know that if you are over the age of 30, the no's in your life, N-O, are, matter more than the yeses. And what I mean by that is the more you say no to in your life, whether it's a relationship or a career opportunity or just a surprise that pops up in your life, if it doesn't match what is optimal or ideal for you, say no immediately because that will send a clear message to the universe as to what it is you wish to experience next. If you accommodate not quite right, you send a mixed message to the universe and that leads to a confusion, which is the state at which most people come see me, you know, where they, where they don't trust their own choices or they experience self doubt. Wow. David, this presents such a wonderful picture of our abilities to mm -hmm. deal with our lives. I want to thank you so much for sharing this with our listeners. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you for the opportunity. We've been speaking with David Zarza, and his website is David Zarza, Z A R Z A dot com. Thank you, and stay with us because we'll be right back after these messages with some more wonderful guests. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired inspire and the inspiration. inspiration. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. 
And we are back. We're almost back with our latest, our newest guest, except that we're having a little trouble connecting. I'm going to try again. So just bear with us. Um, Our guest is Linda Deer, and um, she, wait a moment, Uh, um, she is a psychic medium as well. Now, Linda has one of the most absolutely amazing stories you would ever want to hear. Um, this gal left home at the age of 20 months, ran away from home because she had a very abusive mother and she has been protected since childhood by her spirit guides. She launched herself at the age of 19 as a serial entrepreneur guided by their wisdom And with no formal training, she became an architectural home designer, um, a general contractor, developer, and home builder, and owned the largest framing construction company in Northern California. In the 1980s, she moved to Sedona, Arizona, and became a successful real estate broker and started the first internet service provider in Northern California. Arizona. I mean, she's like the Energizer Bunny. Her passion is helping people live a fear-free life through her work as a psychic medium, dream interpreter, intuitive counselor. And her book, Guided, is the story of her extraordinary life experiences with her spirit guides. And she wrote it in order to help readers connect with their own guidance and recognize the presence of their own spirit guides so that they can live a life without fear and struggle. So I am very pleased to welcome Linda Deer. Hi, Miriam. (laughs) Hi, Linda. Oh, slightly (laughs) rocky beginning. I called the wrong number. Anyway, Linda, tell us about (laughs) leaving home at the age of 20 months. I mean, what what was it that um, you remember from being that age? 20 months old, by then, I was, uh, my mother's routine was to, uh, she'd go into an anger mode, and then she'd start acting on it. She'd start, you know, beating us. And I was her number one target when it came to that. And I knew when the the screaming started, my dad would go to work, you know, six o'clock in the morning, and my mom would start, you know, getting angry and one thing led to another, and I, it didn't take me long to figure out what was coming, okay? So I, at 20 months old, the screaming started. My dad went to work. The screaming started, and I bolted. I shook the side gate loose like I watched my dog, my German shepherd, do many times. And I, once I got out front, once the gate opened and I got out front, I was in barefoot, in a diaper, and a little snap-on baby T-shirt, and off I went. I knew that I had to get out of there. Something was wrong with my mom. Wow. And I, I was, uh, they picked me up on the expressway about three miles from home. And for some reason, I knew I was, was going to find my dad in the direction I was heading. I figured if I could find my dad, he would save me from her. So uh, I was in the middle of the median of the expressway when two police officers stopped and picked me up. And they asked me, uh, where I was going, what I was doing, and, and I told them, I'm, so I'm going to find my daddy. Something is wrong with my mommy. And then they asked me to point them back to my house, and I wouldn't go. To, I wouldn't do it because I, I just went through all this trouble to get away from there, you know, to find my father. I wasn't about to go back there, so they took me to the candy store, bribed me with my favorite goodies. And asked me again to point out how to get back to my house. At that point, my guard was down. I pointed, you know, my way them back to my house, and and um, and they and my mother acted like she, you know, was grateful they returned. She didn't know I was missing. Later on that day, Um, and then when they left, it it my mom went into a, a total rage, and it was real bad at that time. She she acted out her 
vengeance on me, and um, it was so bad. I just passed out on the floor, woke up, and when I woke up, I, I, I knew then I was completely out of options. I was, there was no place for me to go, no way to get away from her. And I, in that moment, I asked for help. I asked out loud for help. I didn't know who I was asking, but it was my knee-jerk reaction to do that. And to my surprise, I had, I had all these helpers around me. It was, an, it, was a, it was the strongest feeling of support that I'd never felt until that moment, that they were calm. They didn't treat me like a helpless baby, none of that. And they, and, and they were there for me, steady and solid. And the love was amazing. I, it was like, I, it, you know, it must be like what it feels like when you cross over because it, the love was beyond anything that you ever have here in this lifetime. So I knew at that point I had, I had everything I needed to navigate this life from then on. Be, at that moment, before that happened, I really didn't, I, there was nothing for me here. I couldn't believe, in fact, that I woke up in, back into this life. I, I didn't expect to after she beat me so badly, you know, but it was that, it was that trauma that, 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 uh, that in that moment when I asked with my heart, I asked with my, I didn't ask with anything else. It was just out of my heart that I asked for help. It's like I knew them. I remember them in that, in that moment. I, it wasn't unfamiliar to me at all. And that's why when they showed up, it didn't scare me. It was finally making sense to me. And from then on, Miriam, I mean, when I compared having those guides, that intelligence guiding me, as opposed to this family I was born into, there was no question about where I was going to learn from, what, who I was going to allow to raise me. It was my spirit guides that raised me, not the family that I was born into. You know, I've heard a lot of stories from people who reach a low point in their lives, either through trauma, through um, a dark night of the soul, through being abused um, uh, like you describe, or being abused uh, in, in, in many different ways. And I'm wondering if it is just that you need to reach this point of surrender where you ask for help. You know, it's like they're all waiting around, just waiting to be asked. Is that your right. sense? Yes, absolutely, absolutely right. They're, they're always there. They, they're, you are always being guided. Always. That's why when you get those feelings, you know, you get those intuitions, that's always coming from your guides. That's how they communicate to you. See, the guides, the way they communicate with each other, Miriam, is, te is telepathic. They don't bother with anything else. They just straight, they're just, they communicate straight with each other through telepathy. With us here on the earth, humans, because, you know, we don't trust ourselves. It's about trusting who you are. You have to know who you are first so you can trust who you are. So people in their lives, they bypass that part of themselves because they're told what to do. They're told how to think. They're told who to love. They're told what to be. They're told everything, all right? And, and they're constantly being amplified to, broadcasted to. They haven't had enough quiet moments to, to collect themselves and... and connect with themselves they missed it so the guides realize this and so their way of communicating to people is through is through a quick one-liner uh, uh, uh when you're driving to work and you get this idea in your head it's not your idea it came from them uh, it's it's in the moment that you saw that sign that signal that 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 synchronicity showed up all these different um coincidences you know so to speak happen and you go you know you start to wonder you you go you know i knew that but had i only acted on it why didn't i do that when i knew better 
But how did you know? Okay, it's always coming from your guides. You are always guided. All of us are. It's about hooking it. He'll hook it. It's about hooking into it. But see, people have been taught not to trust themselves, Miriam. People have also been taught not to feel. Um, right, and and live in fear. Yeah. When you're in fear, they can't reach you because you're blocking them. Yeah. Well, you know, you have written this amazing book, Guided. Uh, I really couldn't put it down, Linda, I have to tell you. I mean, just just the the incredible story of your life. What is your hope for this book? My hope, and, and it's not my hope, it's our hope. I mean, the, the collective, it's all of the guides, it's your guides, it's everybody's guides. It's their attempt to reach all of you so that you know what happened in your life. You can start retracing your steps just like it retraced my steps and, and, and wake you up, help you remember, help you, first of all, remember who you are. So then, second of all, you can trust yourself. Third, you can begin to receive their guidance because you're not caught up in blocking it with your fear. Fear comes when you don't, when fear comes when you forget who you are. That's when fear shows up. When you know who you are, there's no such thing as fear in your life. You can't, your life does not work like that. But when you don't know who you are, fear, it, fear overwhelms people. There, why are so many people on, on medication? Well, because it, they're, why indeed? They're, fear, they're Abs- fearful. They're, they're stressed out. They're scared. Yes. They're nervous. They're, they've got anxiety. And it all comes from fear. Absolutely. And, big, and you yep. do have um, 137 lessons and tips in your book, your book Guided. Linda, what is your website? It's Linda Deer, D E I R dot com. Linda and, Deer. And when the reader, Linda Deer dot com. Great. Linda, thank you so much for being with us. It's You're just welcome. way too short a time. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting to your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and help you realize the inner potential you have to heal every aspect of your life. So come heal yourself every Tuesday 11 a.m. Eastern with your host, Monica Goyal. Namaste. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. We're back with our next and final guest, Georgina Eggleston. Now, Georgina is known as America's Grief Guide for those touched by suicide. As CEO of Beyond Your Grief, Georgina is an author, speaker, trainer, and workshop leader. 
She's trained in countless healing modalities, including Rubenfeld Synergy Method, and she's a science of mind practitioner. More than training, Georgina has walked the path of grief, losing her own son to suicide in 1998 and other family members in sudden ways. These credentials, coupled with life expertise, combine to provide you tools for releasing grief from your body and your mind. Georgina teaches mindful grieving and intentional mourning. She sees private consulting clients and conducts workshops to easefully and effortlessly support others to move beyond their grief. Her book, A New Morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, Discovering the Gifts in Grief, was published in June of 2015 and is available on Amazon. Georgina, welcome. Thank you so much, Miriam. You know, Having lost a child, this is a club that no parent ever wants to belong to. How did it happen? Well, Miriam, have you ever heard someone say, I'm so embarrassed I want to die? Well, my son Reed, who was sensitive, gifted, an athlete, an artist, a mathematician, and a charismatic leader, was banned from the basketball team for the rest of the year and suspended from school for three days. And while I was comforting his girlfriend, who had also been suspended from school, and his father was talking with the basketball coach, who was very devastated about this, Reed ran home and he leaned over the barrel of a shotgun and really, literally lost face. And so I know he never had failed publicly before. And he scrawled a note on the garage wall that said, I am so sorry, family and friends. So it was a tragedy for all of us. I just can't begin to imagine how you felt. So uh, how did how did that experience kind of inform the book that you have come out with recently? It was interesting, Miriam. Remarkable things happened within 24 hours after Reed's departure. And I began writing them down, simply things like a coyote appearing on the golf course right behind our condominium. Um, and Reed had drawn coyotes from the time he was six. I began calling these God signs. And so there were so many of them that I, I just started writing and finally finished the first draft of the book in 2004. And then as I changed and life changed, this, the, uh, uh, the book was able to show people what mindful grieving and intentional mourning is really all about. Well, can you give us a, a, an understanding? Uh, I know it's uh, <laughs> covered in a whole book, but, you know, sort of the tip of the spoon. Mm-hmm. Well, mindful grieving is when the person who is grieving recognizes the many facets of grief, the feelings that come up and doesn't resist them, the physical pain that might come up. I had a pain in my shoulder that was excruciating and I didn't realize this was the back of my heart chakra calling for attention. There's also the mental facet of grief and and of course spiritual. And then I also say mindful grieving is feeling these feelings and listening to them, asking them what their messages are, because grief really is a powerful, transformative teacher when we allow it to be. So what I say is all of us are going to experience grief at some point in our lives. Why not lean into it, listen to it, and learn from it so we can be transformed by it? And then intentional mourning is that willingness to take the feelings that come up and express them as crying, as wailing, as actually getting those feelings up and out of our body. Edward, Reed's dad, always ran every morning. And that was a wonderful way for him to intentionally mourn. And then he would stop and just weep. 
And that's the way he intentionally mourned. So what we so often do in our country is we just want grief to be over. But that's not the way it works. We must engage with it. It's like you have to process it viscerally through your body. So tell me, Georgina, what was the um, transformation that you experienced from your grief experience? I really became connected with my body, Miriam. I, like so many women, was a doer, an overachiever, and I rode my body like a horse. And I would get up and hit the ground running in the morning, and then... At night, I would fall into bed exhausted. So what happened to me is with the synergy process, I learned to listen to myself. And so I became connected to myself once again, because as your listeners know, grief shatters us, and it certainly did me. And so that transformational experience was when I could actually feel a symbol, which was Mount Hood, come up in my knee. And it was became a grounding symbol for me. And it was like, oh, my goodness, what is this about? This is beyond anything I've experienced before. And I needed that grounding because I felt like I was walking on an iceberg, breaking up in dense fog in the middle of the Antarctic Ocean. So it was a relief to have this symbol occur in my body. Mm. Well, there are all many forms of grief and and loss, um, whether it's from the the death or the passing of a, a loved one to loss of a job, loss of status like your son. Um, are there tools that people can use to process this without, um, you know, going to the, the sort of ultimate extreme that your son had to go to? Yes. I say the little losses and the big losses are all losses that we must look at. And in the trauma and grief relief workshop that I facilitate on a monthly basis, I teach three tools. And so if I may, Miriam, I'd like to share one of those with you and your listeners right now. Please do. This is, I have uh, entitled Prolonged Exhale, and it works like this. When we exhale forcefully, (sighs) making a sound, the air will then simply come into our lungs. Having been a speech language pathologist, it's easy for me to understand the mechanics of this. How often has somebody said to you, oh, take a deep breath, and you struggle to do that. But with the prolonged exhale, simply exhaling forcefully, I call it exhaling like a lion, and then allowing the air to come in and exhaling once, And then on the second exhale, simply count silently, and you, uh, excuse me, inhale. And on the, on the next inhale, count silently until you can inhale no more. Pause and then exhale that very same number of counts plus two. So very often I'll inhale to the count of five and then exhale to the count of seven. And what this prolonged exhale does is it engages the parasympathetic nervous system, which is that healing system that is the body's natural go-to. It takes us out of fight, flight, and freeze. And very often people will feel calm in only three breaths. So this is a tool that I teach, and it can be done anywhere because we're always breathing. So standing in the grocery store line and simply getting stressed, one can employ the inhale and exhale plus two. Or driving your car as the frenzy of traffic increases. So that's a tool that I find very, very helpful, and my clients do too. Because when they go down into the vortex of grief, it can be so scary and people need to feel safe. Well, what's a closer tool to take than your breath? Right. Georgina, tell us what, you, what is your website? It's 
beyondyourgrief.com. Very good. And your book is called? A New Morning, Discovering the Gifts in Grief. And it will soon be available on my new website, which will be launched September 1st. But in the meantime, anyone is welcome to go to Amazon.com to order it. Because what I'm realizing is we don't know what to give when we don't know what to say to a grieving person. We often don't know what to do, but now I'm learning that this book can really fill that gap. So I've had people buy it and give it to people who are in the process of dying and also give it to those uh, persons growing or uh, grown children so they can all read the book together and, and discuss it. And it's become a vehicle for opening to deep end of life conversations. It sounds very useful indeed. So again, it's called A New Morning. And uh, we've been speaking with Georgina Eggleston. Georgina, thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome, Miriam. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening. Um, I hope you'll join us uh, next time on New Consciousness Review on the Rising Stars Show. In the meantime, go visit our website, ncreview.com. We have a shiny new website just put up with all singing, all dancing, bells and whistles. And of course, look at our magazine, New Consciousness Review. Until then, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.